name's Erica Moskowski, um, and I'm going to be talking briefly about diversity and inclusion at JuliaCon and more broadly in the open source community. Um, quick disclaimer, abundance of caution, uh, the views that I'm expressing here don't reflect uh, those of my employer, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, or the Federal Reserve System. Uh, the data I'm presenting here comes from GitHub's open source survey, which came out earlier this month. Um, and many, many, many thanks to all the folks at NumFocus, at the Moore Foundation, uh, attendees of JuliaCon 2016, and the organizing committee of JuliaCon 2017 for everything that I'm about to talk about. Uh, okay, so why should we care about diversity and inclusion in the open source community and in the Julia, com Julia community? Uh, here are a couple of very non-exhaustive reasons. First of all, uh, diversity and inclusion is really consistent with the mission or the spirit of open source. Uh, collaboration between strangers is something that makes open source really, really beautiful. And what do we try to do when we collaborate? We try to create uh, software or tools that are usable for a broad, you know, very diverse set of users worldwide that come from lots of different backgrounds. So to the extent that there is a diverse set of developers of that software, we're creating better tools for the people in the world who want to use them. Um, there's also a lot of data, a lot of analysis that indicates that Projects that have more diverse teams are more likely to be successful in a variety of metrics. Um, and there's also evidence that people who have bad experiences working in open source projects, uh, particularly related to harassment and, uh, and discrimination, tend to be less likely to contribute to those projects in the future. And that makes it harder to produce software that's going to be uh, accessible and uh, relevant to lots of people in the, in the community. And finally, uh, working on open source projects has been shown to help people get jobs um, and find employment, and that's a good thing. Uh, and to the extent that there is a, a gender gap or a race gap or other kinds of gaps in, uh, in opportunity in uh, open source and in and tech uh, programming, that creates barriers to entry for certain groups of people. And you know, if we want to believe in equal opportunity, that's, those kinds of barriers to entry are bad. Um, Okay, what kind of data do we have about diversity and inclusion in the open source community? Not a ton, unfortunately. Um, it can be hard to collect this data for a number of reasons, although now, now there are a lot of people um, at different organizations, including GitHub, including NumFocus, the Moore Foundation, who are interested in doing this sort of thing, so hopefully it'll get better soon. But why is it hard to collect this data? Uh, it's hard to scrape profiles for gender information. Uh, a lot of people don't include it for good reasons. Um, and if you're a conference organizer like us, uh, it's, there's, there's a tension between asking to collect uh, data on who your attendees are and potentially de-anonymizing the people who, who self-identify as belonging to a certain group. Uh, for example, here at JulieCon, there are a few, very, very, very few women. If you asked us to identify ourselves in a quote unquote anonymous survey, you would be able to narrow it down to like 10 people. Um, and that's not necessarily good for anonymity. Uh, so there's a tension that conference organizers are facing in terms of collecting that data. Uh, there are sources of this data. A couple of academic papers out there that you can go look at. Uh, there are some surveys. So today I'll be citing stuff from the GitHub open source survey. Um, NumFocus is actually, I'm working with a group at NumFocus to develop a survey to run at Pi Data conferences. Um, and we'll see, hopefully that rolls out in the next year or so. Um, but usual survey caveats apply. There's a lot of response bias, sample sizes can be small. Uh, but with that in mind, here are some motivating statistics. So th from the GitHub open source survey. Uh, that survey surveyed 5,500 users and developers. 3% of those respondents were female and 1% identified as non-binary. Uh, the rest were basically male. Uh, and just to give you a sense of how much worse this is than programming in general in the United States, 22.6% uh, of professional pro computer programmers in the United States are female, and that's from the Bureau of La Labor Statistics. Uh, so we know that there's a, a gender gap in, uh, in tech generally and in programming generally, it's worse in open source. And there are a lot of reasons why that might be. I might not get, I'm not gonna get into that today, uh, but I'm sure we've all seen articles in lots of places. Same story uh, applies to race and ethnicity. So 16% of the respondents to the open source survey belong to an ethnic or national group in the minority of the country that they lived in. Um, 
and that's less than, than representation that we see in the computer uh, programming profession in the United States. The, one of the bright spots in the GitHub open source survey was that there was very good representation from the LGBTQ plus community. Um, so 7% of the respondents to that survey uh, as compared with 4.1% estimated by Gallup in the US. Um, so. Okay, so where does Julia Khan fit into this story? Um, unfortunately, we have relatively little institutional uh, focus on diversity and inclusion. That's getting better. Um, we've been able to do a lot of work this year. I think that's getting us started on the right foot. Uh, we are, of course, also younger than some of the other open source uh, conferences and languages out there that are working on this sort of thing. Um, R has a great task force working on this kind of thing. Our forwards, they have some great work. Um, Python has been running some initiatives. Um, NumFocus and more have recently actually hired people to work on diversity and inclusion full time, uh, which is really exciting, and they've helped us out a lot. Um, and we have very minimal and anecdotal data on the JuliaCon community and the Julia community broadly. Um, again, because of this trade-off between collecting data and being inclusive. But anecdotally, what we know is that there are very few women. Um, there, we have very few Hispanic or Latino attendees and very few black attendees and speakers. Uh, generally speaking, we tend to underrepresent from the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America from a geographic perspective. Uh, and we have no diversity on other forms, of, uh, no data on other forms of diversity, including disability, uh, sexual orientation, educational background, uh, socioeconomic status, that kind of thing. But uh, we've been working on a number of initiatives this year that I'm excited to talk about and share it with all of you in case you are interested in planning a conference of your own or if you're just interested in how you do this kind of thing. So first of all, code of conduct, very, very important. Uh, I sent a message to the Slack about it earlier this morning. Uh, quick refresher, do not harass or intimidate people. Don't use offensive language. Uh, you see the website for full details. Don't encourage any of that behavior. Basically, be a decent and respectful human being. I think we can all do that. Um, and this, is, this holds on all platforms. That holds in person, on the Slack, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, anything you can think of. It, it is uh, if it's inappropriate, don't do it, and call other people if you see it. Um, we'll be hosting a Friday lunch meetup for individuals who identify as underrepresented in the Julia Khan community um, and any allies that also wish to attend. So I'll send details about that or Maybe Katie will send details about that to the Slack. Um, and we did a lot of outreach to organizations um, for underrepresented groups in open source. It's unclear to me how well that worked, but I sent a lot of emails. <laughs> so uh, we can always do a better job. Okay, uh, two relatively bigger scale things. Um, so this year we implemented anonymous talk proposal evaluation. And this is kind of gold standard in terms of diversity and inclusion uh, at conferences. The idea of, uh, of anonymous talk proposal evaluation is that it reduces the opportunity for unconscious bias to sort of rear its head in, uh, in proposal evaluation. Uh, it's not always 100% bulletproof. Uh, you know, you try to assign someone to eliminate all identifying information from, uh, a present, uh, from a, an abstract or a proposal. Sometimes that can be really hard to do, particularly in a small community where we know what people are working on. Uh, but it still sends a really important signal to potential applicants that applications will be evaluated on their own merits and that you won't be given an, like an unjust boost or an unjust, uh, like, uh, or face some sort of unjust discrimination based on who you are as opposed to what your work is. Uh, we also were able to offer reimbursement assistance for travel um, and for conference registration to people who are coming from diverse backgrounds uh, who wanted to attend or speak at the conference. So there was a short application on the website, many of you might have seen this, um, and we asked people what kind of diversity they would bring to the conference and whether they could attend, how much money they would need to come, um, and we were able to support this with a specific grant from the Moore Foundation um, to support those applicants. So we had $10,000 from them, about $2,600 uh, $2, from elsewhere in the budget, um, and we were able to support registration for 16 applicants and travel for 11 applicants. Uh, and this was actually everyone who the, the committee decided should have uh, received funding, so that was something that we were really proud of um, and hope that we can continue in the future. 
really quick, uh, what can we all do going forward to promote diversity and inclusion in the open source community? Write documentation, please. Please do it. Um, out of the, this was really interesting to me. Out of the survey, 93% of respondents complain about the fact that there is bad documentation. 60% of people do nothing about it. And documentation is particularly valued by underrepresented members of the, of the open source community. So please write good documentation. If you want to fix documentation, open a pull request. It's not that hard. You can do it. Uh, obviously, check yourself, code of conduct style, and address problematic behavior when you see it, because it will keep people contributing to projects, and that is really important. Um, in terms of community leaders and conferences, uh, conference organizers, we can do we can give people tools to uh, be engaged in uh, supporting diversity and inclusion. We can give people tools to protect themselves if they feel like they're uh, dealing with some sort of harassment situation. Uh, we can implement anonymous talk review. Uh, and we can, if, for any employers in the room, this is actually really important. If you can allow or encourage your employees to participate in open source work on the job, that is something that's really, really valued by the community. Um, that came out of the survey as well. At JuliaCon, we can continue to iterate on what we've learned this year. Uh, this was definitely a learning experience. I have never done anything related to conference organization before. Um, so we can always do a lot better. Um, we can always reach out and invite more individuals, maybe host some birds of feather type events in the future. Uh, and we can try to address diversity and inclusion elsewhere in the Julia community, not just here. And if you have ideas for us and for me, uh, please, please, please let me know. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'll post this presentation, but I have lots of resources. So, um, thank you very much. And I have time for one question. Yeah. How do you think all of these actions translate into making the community better as a whole, regardless of gender, so the question, just in case everyone couldn't hear it, um, how do we think that these kinds of initiatives make the community better as a whole, not just in terms of uh, diversity? So I think, I mean, I think that when we have a friendly environment, that everyone benefits. Uh, you know, in open source, we're not competing against each other. We're trying to make good stuff for the world. And to the extent that we have a really collaborative and, and exciting and fun community to be a part of, that people feel like they really belong to, then we're creating a, a good place for people to hang out. More people will want to come and work with us. Um, and, and I think that that's only, only good stuff. How do you think it improves the language itself? I, I mean, it, so how does it improve the language itself? Ideally, people who, who have problems with the language or ideas for how to fix the language are coming from backgrounds that we don't have. And so we can take their ideas and make it better and more accessible for people who are coming from, from backgrounds that, that don't uh, relate to ours. So I think I'm out of time, uh, but I'm happy to chat later, and uh, you can find me in the orange jacket. <laughs>